Um, with that, I'll conclude my lecture here. Uh, we're down with the PC for some more info or even some more uh, models to show me because there's a lot of more to show to, show to you. And uh, I'll thank you for the attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tissing. I'm very impressed by the 3D technology you're using Thank to you. offer and to prove transparency in architecture and Absolutely. urbanism. Um, I would like to ask you if you would add th uh, 2D plants too into your project, or is it what a kind of plants, sorry? 2D and 2D, just plants without 3D, no images? just plants, floor plants, for example. What happens then? Is or is it less interesting for architects or the others to, to read or to understand? Well, we're talking here about spatial planning, so it needs some imagination of what is going to happen, how it's going to happen, how it's going to look like. Uh, you have to feel and see distances, uh, see heights, uh, what is the consequences of something the transitions in, in, the, in the spatial um, outside are big with these, so you can't imagine that. Um, what our experience is, and that's also with just 3D on a computer on an e information evening, is that the information is so much better provided, everybody, professional, c citizen, but also someone who doesn't have a feeling of, of space can understand it. And when the information is correct, you can understand it, you have a good debate, you have a good discussion on what is good and what is bad. We might still disagree on what is good and what is bad, but at least we understand, have the same, um, we see the same, what is going to happen, we talk about the same, there's no misinterpretation and it really, really helps a lot. Okay, so you would say that the, that the 3D images are much more international, maybe? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and from a commercial point of view, I'll much really, more quickly really to get and yeah. Okay. Yeah. And which scale should architects and urbanists give information, would you say? And in which scale should they explore ideas? Always and every time. Um, each scale? Each. Even details, about details of, let's say, materials or... Well, it, 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 if, if you're convinced as a government or professional or whatever, that the opinion of your citizens matter and that you really want to uh, uh, use it or benefit it from it or, or from a principal point of view want to give them uh, decision power and uh, then you should, uh, you should do it. Okay, that's very interesting. So we have one question of the audience. Are the people who are involved in this, uh, are they experts not necessarily uh, having impact uh, or being impacted by the project or is it focused on residents who are impacted by the project? Um, we will probably combine the, the, the two people. Of course, in the first stage of making alignments, you do have a team of professionals being there because you can't have it all. I mean, it's also, you have also technical boundaries, financial boundaries, so you should be very, very clear on that. Um, but in the end, um, everybody who uh, wants to say something or has an opinion about a design or about something else, uh, I think you should be able to, uh, to provide them in giving it on the other hand. Um, the, the, whether you weigh it or not in your final decision depends, I think, a little bit on if someone in Maastricht, for example, has an opinion on Hamburg on a project in Hamburg and he never has visited here, yeah. um, should you weigh that opinion in your decision? I doubt it. I think uh, there's a slight distinction between uh, opening up uh, projects for citizens' <coughs> criticism versus open innovation. So we have a challenge here and experts from Japan, if you have something yeah. to add to this project, you're welcome. Uh, so you're much more focused on uh, not uh, getting open innovation or getting experts involved, but getting uh, experts to help citizens uh, voice their problems, issues, yeah. and then redesign it. Is that correct? That, that's, that's, that's quite correct. I, I didn't mention an, another project that we're currently running. It's about a, a rural uh, housing area. It's 40 to 60 uh, houses that are able to, to, to be developed on that land. And uh, we said to the owner of the land and the local government, um, let's give freedom to everybody. Let a group of people decide themselves uh, what to do, um, as well as the housing itself or as, as the whole community. 
And for that process, we looked for somebody, a professional, who put in his technical and his, his expertise and as an architect. And then it's, in Holland at least, it was very hard to find someone who was, as Peter always said, um, yeah, um, giving service to the people instead of um, presenting himself as, I'm going to tell what is good for you. Um, and that's a little bit the difference, as, as you say, oh, if, if that's the, the mindset of a professional, I think um, uh, that, that, that should be the mindset. Yeah, the most uh, used argue of the of the governments is that they want to gain time, that they don't want to lose time, and this uh, kind of process you you are using, is it really is it like you're gaining time or are you? We we for this project we don't know yet. Uh, it's always or others. It's always hard um, because it's a process as a. It's as a I, process, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's one of the. What I always say is uh, when you want to improve the quality of decision making, you should use things as virtuality, you should think, use things as e-participation, and you should hire the right professionals with the right mindset uh, for that. And yeah, what is the quality of decision making? Is that a feeling of fair play? Is that an outcome that citizens um, have decided for themselves completely? Or is that faster? Yeah, I think that's for every project um, uh, different, and it depends on the on the on the on the on the client on the government so the want. effect is much more important than making it quickly or to end very quickly with the project but quickly is also an effect in some yeah. cases it needs to be quick i think you have to be um, uh, honest about that some things need to go faster uh, uh, and then you 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 um, uh, design your process differently because that's important in that case Okay, and uh, would you say that transparency needs transparent uh, game rules? Sorry, transparent? Game rules. Game rules? So, yeah, rules. Game rules. For example, what about re registrations? Sorry, re registrations. Yeah, we, we use registrations on the, on the, on the internet, uh, but you can do it on, an, um, uh, um, on a dummy name. But we, want, we do ask. Uh, when it goes to anonymous, we do ask um, a confirmation through the internet, through the email, for that. And do you break with anonymity? No, or we don't. No. If, Is if it visible? Doesn't, doesn't Everybody want. can read. Everybody who? can. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. And uh, what kind of rules do we need in this context of transparency? What would you propose? Rules for. Like, everything, uh, like. Uh, do we have uh, rules according, for example, discrimination, discriminating uh, invocations like we had a few months uh, ago in Germany, for example, and a big panic just because of that. What would you propose to have more transparent rules? Yeah, um, I think that's, that's, that's a different question, you can have a complete debate on, on, on rules and, and, and respect on that because you're talking about uh, mutual respect on, 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 on citizens, yeah, uh, that's it. you're planning, uh, you're, you're saying that. Uh, in Holland we had um, the same problem with our uh, national uh, political party, uh, meneer Geert Wilders, who made a point on the internet where everybody who had a complaint on Polish laborers, guest laborers, could complain there. Um, that's very difficult because you can say, okay, there's a rule that I don't allow it, but that doesn't um, um, ignore the problem. You ignore the problem with, with that. So our Prime Minister said, uh, I have no opinion on that. It's just something that the political party uh, does. Um, but there you are in, in, a, in, a, in a really big dilemma because you are offending people. Uh, on so the other hand, ignoring it or f making it uh, illegal, I forbid it, is, is not, not the way to work either. I find it a really, really hard question. So we have to discuss about this, maybe? We can have a whole participation process yeah. on that either. Okay. <laughs> um, another question, is a government able to offer really neutral subjects or projects? Sorry, or isn't it always acting political by offering f a few ideas or certain ideas or details? What, what do you mean? Could you repeat one more time? For example, governments, they are trying to include 
the po population, yeah. uh, what transparency. And, but um, for example, in Hamburg, 10 years ago, we had this kind of uh, project and um, some, some projects are on their way to be realized. That's very nice. But um, they proposed uh, several, um, several projects, but by offering these, are they really neutral? Or are they political by offering a few and certain projects? That's I know, very speci uh, I know, specific. I know, I know politicians who, who do these things just clearly on, 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 on their political uh, motivation. Uh, but I also know politicians um, that are um, completely opposed to that and, and do it really from, from a, um, a convinced idealism that, that this is the way that it should work. And um, they are always they are always happy with the outcome because it is the outcome of a process. Um, but in the end, that's what I was saying. In Holland, it's it's government driven the spatial planning. It's the government is has such a big influence, um, and for there, it really depends on on just the person that that is there. And I'm not able to judge on whether a politician does it well or doesn't do it well. I do vote on certain politicians and certain certain not, but. They're in charge, so I can't blame them for being wrong or not wrong. Okay, thank you. I would like to open up to the audience if we have any other questions. Um, I have a question, not only for you, but also for uh, the other speakers uh, before you in this session. Uh, it's uh, uh, something that, uh, uh, the way I understand it, it, it may be very um, um, country dependent or legislation dependent, so not the same uh, in every country of Europe, but it's a question for you, it's a question yeah. for your colleague from Belgium. Huh? Uh, we are, uh, um, in, in, in all these presentations, we are s stressing the value that comes out of the crowdsourcing aspect. So more inputs are good because uh, they improve the quality and uh, the detail and uh, the utility and usefulness of the plan. Uh, in Italy, at least, we have another issue which is as important as uh, the, uh, the previous one. Uh, the issue is that all the people who have interest or are affected according to any principle uh, they must have their say, they must be asked to participate. Then, in case they don't participate, it's another matter, but at least they must be yeah. uh, invited uh, to take part in the discussion. Uh, which makes uh, this uh, um, term, participation, a little bit more ambiguous in my view, because on one hand we are speaking about participation like we did this morning, you know, as a way to yeah. No, uh, just think of the Birmingham example. With more people attending the issue of the new plan or the new website, we can improve the overall results. But there is also that other meaning. So what's your contribution with this tool and the methodology behind, or what is your opinion as a planner, as a, an expert on this, about these two meanings uh, of participation? One, just as a way to improve, and the other one as a way to let all the people who must take mm -hmm. part really part of the game. 